So there are two ways you can handle tasks in Notion. The first one is pretty straightforward. You do slash to do, you start adding a to do list. Do that thing, do another, whatever you want to do, cross it off when you're done, get the satisfying line through it. Really works pretty well. The problem is those tasks are kind of isolated where they are. It's not a problem if you have a single task page for things you want to do, but you may often have tasks like in a project. So in project C, we may have some tasks. We'll forget about this stuff we did before. Works out, okay, cool. We have some to-dos to do in here in Project C. Send Amy that document and write up a proposal. You know, whatever you have to do for that project, that's great. Those tasks are in there. The problem is they're kind of buried in there. I'm going to spend my time on my main page here. I may go into my projects page or this project page. Um, but getting back to that task list, you're going to forget about these tasks. They're very likely to get lost. So there's a slightly more complex but much better way to handle tasks that I suggest you do. And let's walk through that briefly here. So go back to our tasks page. Let's delete these two tasks here. And what we want to do is just make a table. A normal database, it's called tasks. And so uh, we have the name of the task. We'll just put a sample in here, sample task. Um, we have the status of the task. So we'll say status. And we can make it a select. And so the task is either open or closed. The two states of the task here. And then we can have the project it goes to. And this is where it can get kind of cool, is we can say, um, we'll actually make this a uh, relation to, it's actually called relations and rollups, our, our list of projects. So we go to our project database, relate that over. So what project does this belong to? And so this sample task belongs to the project A. And this next task belongs to project B. And we'll do one more, another task that also goes to project A. And it's, we'll mark it as open now. So here's all our tasks we had to do. And what's neat with this is, of course, we can add a view. We don't want to see all the closed tasks because over time that'll pile up. So we can add another view saying, um, we'll say all tasks, we'll make the other view for that. So here's a view that views everything, including the closed tasks, in case you need to reference them later. But on our main default view, we're going to add a filter that only shows us the tasks that are open. Because that's all we care about, really, is the tasks that are open. So status is open. So now we get to it. Here's the stuff we have going on. We can add due dates. We can add attachments. You could add a lot to it to make it more powerful. But this is just a, a quick look at how it could work. But here's where it gets great. If we go over to our projects now, to project A, you can see it's pulled in some of the tasks on the side. We don't want to do that. Let's just hide that. That's not helpful to us. It kind of works, but it's a little messy. But inside project A now, we're going to do something a little bit different here. We're going to make a new template um, called tasks, tasks for this project. We're going here, we're going to make a linked database to tasks. So there's our tasks database. So we'll pull in all the tasks. And the problem now is going to pull in all the tasks, and that's okay. We'll let it do that first. Um, everything open, close, whatever we have, perfect. So that's good enough. Let's go back. So now project A, let's have it pull in the tasks. Now again, it's going to at first pull in all the tasks. And this will take a little more effort um, on each one. Once it pulls in the tasks, we can add a filter to it. We'll add a filter that says when the project is in whatever task we're in here. We're in project A. So it only shows the project A tasks inside of project A. In this case, I have it showing whether they're open or closed, because if I'm in a project, I probably want to see everything and see the status. You could hide the closed again, but inside Project A, I see the Project A tasks. Let's run back over to Tasks again here um, just to see everything. So we have Project A and Project B. I couldn't remember where I had the other one. So we'll go into Project B and do the same thing now. But now we have that template set up. So we say Tasks for this project. Pull in all the tasks for and this is going to be our default thing, having the tasks. Um, and again, now we'll set up that filter. So each time you add a project, it takes a little little minute here to set things up. But in the long run, it makes it great. And there's another advantage I'll show you too in just a second. So it contains project B, shows all the tasks for it. Now what's neat here is if I go in this link database and add something, another task to do, because it was already filtered on project B, it's automatically assigning it to project B. I don't need to tell it this task is for B because I was on the project B page so it makes it a Project B task. I can say it's open or closed or whatever, um, but it's there. And if I go into our full list of tasks, 
I can see, you know, another task to do is in there. And then what I can do is going back to my main content page where I have different things pulled in. I could do a different link database to the tasks. I could do a link database here to tasks. Again, I don't want to see all the tasks, just the ones I have to work on today. So I could filter this out, filter to show me when the status is open. So now on this page, I can see all my open tasks. You can see a lot of different things I could pull in here, and I could really pull in a lot of these if I wanted to. You know, again, we had the example, um, we had a number of examples. You, you can go back to the videos and see those. But a lot of different things you could pull in, and everyone's going to handle it different. So this page obviously is getting pretty messy, and hopefully it doesn't look like this. But you can pull in those linked databases like that. And with this task system now, I don't lose tasks. You know, before, if I was deep in a project, if I went into project you know, C or whatever and made a little task list in here, you know, made a little to-do list, that's cute and you know, that's stuff to do for project C, that's fine, but it just lives there in that little task. If I go back to see my things to do here, it's never going to show up. If I go to my main task list, it's never going to show up here. But if I actually did it the right way, if I go back into project C and say, you know what, that's stuff to do, all right, let's pull that in a minute, but let's, in the meantime, you know, let's do this right. I have another blank in here and say, okay, let's pull in tasks for this project. And even in this case where it's going to be empty, you know, because we're going to filter it down to only show project C. So we're going to filter, add a filter where project is project C. So it's going to be empty now, but even with it being empty, I can click new and say that new task, and it's automatically going to put it in project C. Even with nothing else in here before, because it was already filtered, to project C and we'll say it's open. And now when I go back home, I go back to my main content page, that project C task shows up in my list of things to do. Um, the next step you probably want to take here is to add some dates or add some other assignees. There's a lot of powerful things you can do. And there's other examples of databases you can download with that, but that's a pretty good way to handle task management at a high level, let you put it in different places around your database, but still pull it all into one place. So you don't lose those one-off tasks that you may have stuck here and there. Um, and kind of get you in trouble when those disappear and you forget about them.